Paul Kalanithi was just 36 years old when he was diagnosed with advanced lung cancer. But rather than surrender, he embraced life, continuing to work as a neurosurgeon and becoming the father to a baby girl. He also wrote a memoir, When Breath Becomes Air, before he died last March. In it, he writes eloquently and unsentimentally about his fate. I was neither angry nor scared. It simply was. It was a fact about the world like the distance from the sun to the earth. I drove home and told Lucy. Well, in a moment, we'll talk to Paul's wife, Lucy, but first this. As a doctor, Paul Kalanithi faced the harsh reality of mortality every day. But during his training to become a neurosurgeon, he had to face up to his own when the cancer in his lungs was diagnosed as inoperable. He didn't know how long he would have to live, but having studied English literature and philosophy before becoming a doctor, he started to write down his thoughts and began to face the reality of having to say goodbye to his loved ones. It's a careful balance. If you don't think about the bad case, that ending is going to be very rough on you and your family. But if you're going to think about the good case, you're going to miss an opportunity to really make the most out of your life and time. He writes that doctors see people at their most vulnerable, their most scared, their most private. The book delves into his own feelings as he transitions from doctor to patient. It explores the very nature of time and how best to spend it, especially in relation to his daughter KD, who was born after his diagnosis and nine months before he died. Since Katie's birth, my time with her has had a very peculiar and free nature. In all probability, I won't live long enough for her to remember me. And so the time is just is what it is. Paul Kalanithi finished the book just before he died. His wife Lucy wrote the epilogue in which she records his final moments and her own journey to his end. Well, joining us now is Paul's wife, Lucy Kalanithi. Lucy, a young doctor tells his young doctor wife, mm -hmm. I've got lung cancer. What was your immediate thought? Yeah, you know, interestingly, John, um, we, he and I were together standing side by side looking at the CAT scan images um, with our eyes, um, sort of seeing the cancer as it, you know, we could see it riddling his organs and his spine. And so we actually took it in visually um, together and then started to speak about it. Um, and we were alone when we got that news. Um, sort of unusual, a, a doctor wasn't telling it to us, we actually looked at it. But it's um, devastating to have it so bluntly yeah, straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did you immediately think of death? <clears throat> yeah, um, we, you know, science is changing all the time, but as it stands, um, metastatic cancer is not curable. And we knew that um, in, you know, milliseconds yeah we knew it right away i mean you, you've treated patients who've had mm -hmm. cancer he treated patients mm -hmm. who've had brain cancer that's right uh, and therefore you knew immediately what you were up against and in a sense yeah. perhaps you had more to contend with than somebody who wouldn't necessarily know quite what the odds were yeah you know i, I think kind of being doctors was maybe the best and worst part of it um because the flip side was we'd seen it happen to so many people and witnessed and helped other people through that. And then when we were faced with it, we didn't think as much, why me? Uh, we sort of felt, you know, now it's our turn um, to face this and it happens um, and, and then it was ours. Um, so it was sort of the best and worst part was that knowledge, you know? What did it do to your marriage? Um, it was, um, Oh, it was so intense. It was, it's interesting because Paul writes in the, in the book about how we'd been going through a rough patch mm. actually just before his diagnosis and it all sort of came to a head. And then just thereafter, he was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And so the intensity of all of that um, uh, sort of meant we really had sort of come together and chosen to be together and, um, and then really needed each other. Um, so it just was, it was unbelievably intense. And and at the same time, we, we had fun, you know, even though he was ill, um, we kept growing our lives together and enjoying each other um, and making meaning, you know. This, so you didn't this shut down and prepare for death? Um, no, I mean, we talked openly about it, uh, so we weren't ignoring death, um, but, but he, he was working on this book and then we decided to have a child, so there was sort of all this living uh, kind of swirling around that with it. That itself was an enormous decision. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. He That's said, right. I want a child. You said, I want a child. What happened? Um, we sort of raised our eyebrows at mm. each other as we said it. Um, and 
uh, you know, we talked really about what that would mean. I, I knew I would be a solo parent going forward at some point, so did he. Um, and he, he writes about this tough decision in the book um, and the idea that um, I worried that, that it might make his illness and death more painful for him um, because saying goodbye could be so much more painful. But um, he said, you know, wouldn't it be great if it, if it did make it more painful? And what he meant was um, to have a child grant such a degree of meaning to us and our family um, and to have such a rich life that's then ending. Um, that's actually such a wonderful thing. Did you even fear that you might give birth after he died? You know, I did. I feared that. I feared um, postpartum depression, actually. There were... It was, in, it was introducing a number of risks and complications to the situation, and I, we really sort of tried very hard to gain support and cope, um, and we had such a community that allowed us to, to continue to blossom even in spite of this. Um, what what right. will you tell your daughter of her father? Um, you know, thankfully, I have this book as a way, you know, he's speaking to her in the book, too. He's writing it as a journal and for a reader, to bring the reader into the experience of facing mortality. And then it's also a letter, a love letter to her, in a, in a way, you know. And you wrote the epilogue, which That's is right. therefore from your perspective. That's right. Does it differ much from his? Um, you know, I, I almost feel as if Paul, if Paul could have reflected on his own death, he would have, he would have described it and he would have... Um, you know, I felt as if I were doing something for him by sharing what the process of his dying was and then reflecting on what it's been like since. Well, the details of your book are on our website. Mm. Thank you very, very much for Thank coming you in. Thank you for having Thank you. me. Thank you. Thank you.